Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now's a great time to grab your pens and weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already, because the service starts in 90 seconds. Welcome CE family, we cannot wait to see how God is going to work through today's service. When you're in the service, if you have any questions, comments or prayer requests, go to churchexperience.tv forward slash connect or pull out your camera app and scan this QR code. Or if you've always wanted to stay connected with us, just hit the subscribe button. We really would love to hear from you and get back to you and be praying for you, CE family. Right now we are ready to jump into today's service. Would you stand with me as we spend time worshiping Jesus, singing along to Him. Faith 
Cause you're good on your promise You're good on your promise You said your love will never give up You said your grace is always enough You said your heart would never forget or forsake Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, your word that is timeless, your word that covers us and protects us, the promises you've given us, Lord. Your words are powerful, and Lord, we are so thankful for all the words that you've given us, all the words you put on our hearts, and all the words that you've said in your truths, Lord. And we pray that your word goes on forever and ever. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. How's everyone doing this morning? It's, um, if I haven't met you, my name is Warren. It feels a bit weird this morning because I'm not doing anything. I didn't do hosting. I'm not doing the message. Uh, Phil's doing the message. It, it feels quite weird for me. It's, uh, it's like it's weird. I, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know if I'm, I try to help out with coffee. They chase me out of that. I try to help the tech. They chase me out of that. I even try to help with the kids and they chase me out of that. I kind of feel I have to do something today to earn my keep. Eh? Otherwise, by next week, you're going to change the locks on me. I don't know. This is a bit, a bit weird. But... Um, but yeah, it's been such a wonderful time, uh, Pastor Phil. But Phil, why don't you come up here? Phil's going to be sharing with us. Phil is such him and his wife are here with us, but I love this family. Uh, Phil's been, do you know in Hebrews 12, it talks about you, you, you've been surrounded by a cloud of witnesses running the race of endurance that you're on. Now, now, now Phil's a marathon runner, 
So Phil loves marathons. But he's been one of the loudest voices celebrating us on the sidelines. So, so when uh, Jen and I are off to Sacramento, uh, literally as a second service start, and so I, I wanted to invite Pastor Phil to come and just share with us. But, but I just wanted to honor you first. Before you get up here, he's, he's, a, he's part of the family here. And so he doesn't come as like a guest speaker. He comes as a, as a family member. And, um, and, and, and he's been celebrating with us when what God's doing here in, in Church Experience West Chase uh, he's been just celebrating with us on the sidelines, just just encouraging us on, and Warren, this is so awesome what's happening. And so, does anyone know how many weeks we're in today? 42. We're 42 weeks. 42? What did you say? 42 terrific. 42 terrific. We're in 42 weeks as a church plant. Isn't that awesome? And, the, and the journey's only started. We've only just started. And so, so, so Phil is going to be uh, sharing this morning. I just want to pray for him before he gets up. So, Father, I just thank you for Phil. I thank you for this family, Father. I just thank you for just the... The, the wisdom that he gives me, Lord, and just the, the encouragement and the, uh, you, Lord, I'm just thinking of, you know, he was one of the first people that we met when we landed, Lord, and we went to church experience at Central Father and just how his enthusiasm and his wisdom and his encouragement has really helped, helped me along this journey, Lord. And so we want to celebrate him and his family, Lord, celebrate all the lovely work he's doing behind the scenes and in his work. Will you bless him, Father? May, Lord, as a, as a church, may we just open up our hearts and our minds to hear what you have placed on his, on his heart today. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you in your name. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Phil. Well, I am really, really honored to be here today and uh, kind of fill in a little bit for Warren and Jen as they uh, take a little bit of trip and have a little bit of break and as well get some get some opportunity to get some resources poured into them. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Phil Lewis and I run an organization called Winning a Home Tampa Bay and Tampa Bay Counseling and Coaching. And, and we work with moms and dads, husbands and wives, uh, sons and daughters and singles and seniors on all kinds of different issues, professionally and personally, and love that opportunity. We partner with CE over a lot of years now and worked with lots of families here and uh, and there and actually at all the CE campuses, including Butler. And so we're, we're really, really privileged to be connected with um, Jen and Brandon and also Warren and Jen. And I, I, I love the fact that when his picture showed up in the first service, when his picture showed up in the video, everybody clapped again too. I love how much you guys love them. And I just want you to know, you already know this, but they love you a ton too. And so it's, it's really my privilege to, to be here to, to share with you. Can I just pray for us as we get started? Because I feel like God probably has some things to say that maybe won't come out of my mouth, but might end up in your heart. And so I want to make sure that, that we give him that opportunity to do that. Father, thank you for this day. I pray that you'd protect Warren and Jen as they travel, watch over them, help them to have a great time of of not just rest, but just being resourced and refreshed to come back and continue to do what you've called them to do here. And I pray that today for our, our, our moments and the time that we have together, that it would be a time well invested and that you would use it for your honor and your glory. In thy name we pray. Amen. I do have to say one other thing too. Can you give it up for Josh? Wow. What, what a great worship leader. Such, such good stuff. <clears throat> I want you to know something. Last night, the truth is every night, every night at midnight, you are given a gift, okay? You're giving, and I'm giving a gift, and it's the same gift. It's not different for me. It's not different for you. We each get 24 hours. Everybody say 24 hours. We each get 24 hours to, to use as we see fit. We get to decide how we're going to use it. And so I decided that I would bring $24. Hopefully I won't get mugged on the way out, but I would have brought $24 today to represent not, not, not money, but represent minutes. So each of these represents not just 100 cents, but they represent 60 minutes. And I've already spent some of mine today. So have you, so have you right? Uh, as of midnight last night, I think I spent one, two, three, four, probably five or six of these sleeping. And man, even though I don't like it cold in Florida, I love it to sleep in. I love wrapping up a big giant blanket and get up a beanie and sleeping. And it, it's wonderful. I spent about an hour this morning having breakfast and fixing my hair. Um, I'm going to spend probably about an hour and a half. We live in St. Pete, so it took us about 40 minutes to get here and probably about 40 minutes to go. So I'm going to spend about one and a half of these today just in travel time. But you have, you have decided to take one of these and invest it well. Invest it in, in one hour here at Church Experience. And I'm, I'm hoping and I'm praying that this will, be, this will be amazing. And this will be a return on your investment that you will, you'll never forget. It'll bring life change to you. It'll bring encouragement to you. It'll bring help to you. It'll bring hope to you. And that's, that's, really, my, that's really my prayer today. So what, what I'd like to do is I'd like for us just to, to think about time. Everybody say time. 
like for us to think about time. And, and, and really, as we talk about that today, I, I want to mention just a couple things. First of all, God, God created time. That may sound kind of silly to say, but I want you to know God created time. In fact, it was the very first thing that he created. In Genesis chapter 1, it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Hear it? Tick, tick, tick. Tick. That's how it all began. God created time. He didn't create time for himself. He doesn't need time. He's eternal. He created time for us to create a framework for, for how we should live, for, to be organized, to, to, to plan, to sleep, to work, to all those different things. And he gave us 24. He still gives us 24 every night at midnight. So I want you to think about that. God created time. Second thing is, now is your time. Okay, now is your time. I, I, I love this passage in Acts chapter 17. Paul is speaking to a bunch of leaders and he's trying to get them to learn a very, very valuable lesson. And the lesson is this. The lesson is that there is a God who cares so much about us. And there is a God who has planned not just the universe, he's planned you. He's planned you and he's planned me. And he's explaining about who this God is. And so he's talking to these leaders and he says, this God is the God. He's the one who gives life and breath and everything else to people. Take a deep breath. Man, doesn't that feel good? The Bible says that's, that's from God. He doesn't need any help from them. He has everything he needs, okay? Uh, God began by making one person, and from him came all the different people who live everywhere in the world. God decided exactly, everybody say exactly. God decided exactly when and where they must live. Now, I... Uh, I had two brothers and an older sister, and my parents were done having kids. And until, all right, I came along. And my mom, I, I love it. My mom, she would always say, well, Philip, you were, you were such a surprise. And my dad would say, nope, you were an accident. You were not planned at all. But I, but I wasn't an accident, right? I mean, God had it planned. He had a purpose. And it's when and where. And I just want you to know, now is your time. No matter how you got here, no matter who you are, God planned this. Scripture is very clear about that. You, there is no accident. The, the chronology and the geography of your life has theology behind it. Where you are and when you are, God has plan and purpose. So the people you're around, the people that you love, the people that you're with, the people that you're leading, God has a plan behind it. God created time. Now's your time. And watch the time. You ever heard that phrase before when we were getting ready for something like, hey, we're getting ready to leave in a little bit. So watch the time. Watch the time. Be aware of the time. Be concerned about the time, right? Um, in, in Psalm 90, not all the Psalms were written by David, by the way. I think a lot of us think that. But the truth is, and Moses wrote several of them too. And this one in particular, this is a beautiful Psalm where he talks about how awesome God is. And as he moves through this, 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 this discourse on how amazing God is, he gets to a place where he reminds us about how important it is to keep in mind our days, right? To keep in mind the 24 hours that we're given each and every night at midnight. And he says, teach us to number, right? Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them, right, as we should. Now, I don't think he's talking about wasting them, Okay. I think he's talking about investing them in the right way. In fact, another translation says, help us to have wisdom as it comes to our time. Help us to not, not waste a single moment. God created time. Now's your time. Watch your time. Again, not, not for us to, to just count our days, but to make our days count in every relationship that we have. So, probably the most familiar passage of scripture about time is in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. And I just want to clarify something. This is important to leave that A in there. It's not there is time for everything because that's not true. I work with people professionally and personally and I tell them, look, you know you can't do everything. Right? You, you know you can't do everything. So you have to pick the most important things. The relationships that matter the most. The life that matters the most. So, serving God the, that, that, that's, that's the important. You can't do everything. And so just be careful, because like, we do that a lot of times, right? We talk, about, we talk about even money. And we'll say money is the root of all evil. That's not what it says. It's the love of money, right? And even as we've come through Thanksgiving and the holidays, 
we hear this verse over and over again. It says, be grateful for everything. No, it says be grateful in everything. You're not going to be grateful for everything that happens in your life. I'm not grateful for everything that happens in my life, but I'm, I'm grateful in everything because I know God is working everything for his good and for his honor. Okay, so just be careful you leave that in there. But there is a season, there is a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plan, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Christy Wright is a personality with the Dave Ramsey group, and she does a lot of writing on balancing life. We hear that all the time, especially across the table in our room, across the screen. We hear people saying, how do I get this right? How, how, can, I, how can I be successful at work? How can I pursue an amazing career? And at the same time, how can I be a good mom and dad? How can I be a good husband and wife? How, how do I balance these things? And she says, balance, throw out that word. Stop using that word balance. That's like saying, I'm going to work 40 hours. I'm going to sleep 40 hours. I'm going to take care of my family. And it doesn't always work out like that. Everybody say, it doesn't always work out like that. No, we all know that, right? So Christy Wright says, forget about the word balance. Put in this idea. Do the right thing at the right time. Do the right thing. Because there are some times, right, right? There are some times at home where we've got to give a little more time and a little more energy at home to get things right, to keep things on track. And we have to tell work, we've got to say, hey, look, I can't come in Friday. I'm going to have to leave early on Monday. I just want you to know I, I, I will make it up. Right. Or there are times at work where things are going crazy. You've got to spend a season. Right. Everybody say season. You got to spend a season where you're doing some things over here. But but you but again, you do the right thing. It's the right time. You, you make sure that you're using these moments, these minutes in the right way at the right time. So the big question for you is what time is it? What time is it for you? Yeah, look at your watch. Look at your cell phone. But more than that, look at your heart, look at your life. What, what time is it? When we work with couples and we literally sit around a, a table and we talk about things and we'll write things down and we'll have a pile of, of conversation about what they're struggling with, what they're going through, what they're dealing with, what they're fighting over, <laughs> right? And then I'll ask this question. As we get near the end of the hour, I'll say to them, so what do we need to do right now? There's a stack, right? Where, where do we start? But well, what do we need to do? And then I ask maybe a, a more specific question. What do we really need to do? What do we really need to do? What, what is the number one thing that will help you the most right now? For some of you today, it's, it's God time. When you look at your watch spiritually, it's God time. No, 2021, 2022, 2023, all good years. Good experiences. But maybe for some of you, that's all it was. And, and God has been moving you, making you, preparing you for a life change because he loves you. The Bible says in John 4, 9, he says, this is how God showed us love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loves us. And he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice. And the second Corinthians says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, everybody say in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I love this passage of Scripture because it's very clear about what will bring transformation to our lives, and it's being in Christ. Now, you are in church experience today. You are in church. I'm glad you're here. So glad you're here. It's very nice meeting. So many of you had a great time in the first service. I think this is going to be the best service. So. But I, I just want you to know... I really, really enjoy and have enjoyed being here. My wife is with me, and we, we just are I'm falling in love with so many of you guys. It's, it's great. But I just want you to know, church experience, it's not enough. Warren and Jen are wonderful, wonderful people, wonderful leaders. The other people that are serving and helping, awesome people. You are wonderful people, but being in church is not enough. Being in Christ being in Christ is where we've got to get to. And though you may be here and you're experiencing belonging, at some point we want to encourage you to experience believing. 
and that your life would change, not just because of the relationships that you have here, but because of your relationship that you have up there. And that's what God wants to do. That's what he's here to do. John Maxwell says, people will change when they hurt enough, they have to, they've learned enough they want to, or they receive enough that they're able to. The Bible is very clear in John that Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent them draws them. Okay? God has to draw you. In other words, he has to use some things in your life. Sometimes there will be some hurt. There will be some pain. There will be some struggles in your life that God will use not to destroy you, but to detour you from the road that you're on to get you back to him. And, and sometimes God will put some learning in your mind and, and your understanding to go, why am I doing this when, when this is really what he wants? And sometimes, sometimes God will help you to have some stuff so that you literally are able to take the next step towards him. And I don't, I don't know who you are today. All I know is that in preparation for this day, this came up. And so I have a feeling, I have a pretty strong feeling that there's somebody either in first service or second service that doesn't doesn't know God. You know about God, but you don't know God in a relationship. You're in church, but you're not in Christ. And so I, I just want to give you a chance to, to make this God time, to, to decide to follow Him. And we're only a few days into 2024. Your, your year could be so different. Your you could be so different by trusting in Him. So I'm going to make it real simple. I, I've just put together a real simple prayer that we can pray. And I'd like for all of us believers belongers, those that want to follow God, to, to just pray this together. All right? Um, are you ready? Okay, here we go. God, it's time for me to live for you. Forgive me for my sins. Fill me with your spirit. Help me follow you in every area of my life. Amen. Amen. So for some of you, it's go time. Uh, and not just God time, but it's go time. Now, I, uh, Warren introduced me in the first service as a runner, and I, and I am. I'm a runner. I'm, I love to run. Um, I know for some people, like, running? You love to run? How could you love to run? Like, no one's chasing you. Yeah, it, it, it really is. A, it helps me a ton. It helps me to stay calm. It helps me with my mind. I love the dopamine that I get, the serotonin, and all that kind of stuff. And because of that, because of that, one of my favorite passages of Scripture is Hebrews chapter 12, which talks about running. I, and, and I believe that if you took John 3.16... For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believed in Him would never perish but have everlasting life. He took that one verse and paired it with the first three verses of Hebrew. If something really, really weird happened that all the other scriptures suddenly just disappeared, okay? I don't think that's going to happen. But if it, if it suddenly disappeared, those four verses would give you enough God to get started with God. That's, that's how important and how vital and how clear they are. So Hebrews chapter 12 says if Therefore, since you're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and it's talking about Hebrews 11 gives us the whole list of all the heroes of the faith, the people who had gone on before us, Daniel and David, and Solomon, and all those people, and Samson that, that, that have showed us the way, so to speak. And so it's saying those people, since you're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let's run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So I, I want to just look at that again. Therefore, since we're surrounded by these witnesses, what would these witnesses say to us? When I, when I run a race, it is kind of amazing at how the, 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 the power that comes from the, the, the crowd. There are times in a half marathon where, where I'm running and I don't see anybody and I'm running by myself and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm doing okay. But as I get closer and closer to a corner or to a, a particular place in the race where there's more people and they're crowding, they're, they're, they're cheering, I can feel the energy kind of surge up and I can begin to go a little faster because I know people are watching me, right? I know people are cheering me on. And that's what, that's what the writer is saying. There are people cheering you on. If we could hear them, if we could listen, if we could tune into them, listen, listen, listen. Did you hear it? I, I, I think one of them said, we did it so you can do it. We did it, so you can hey, listen. Listen again. Did you hear that? They said, "They said we did it, but do it better than we did it." Wait, I think I hear something else. I, I think they're saying, "Do it for those that are following you. R run the race for them. We we ran the race for you. You run the race." 
you run the race for them. And it goes on to say, throw off everything that hinders, everything that hinders. James Clear, who wrote a book called Atomic Habits, sold more on Amazon in 2022 than any other book in any other format, <clears throat> in every format. He says, be ruthless about what you ignore. Time, energy, and resources, right? Time are so precious, you have to be ferocious about cutting your priorities more than you realize, and certainly more than is comfortable. You can only deeply commit to a few things, one or two, maybe three. Every pretty good, sort of nice, kind of fun thing you abandon is like shedding a weighted vest that lets you move at top speed. You were so busy focused on how much you could carry, you never realized how you could run this fast. Isn't that amazing that, that, that the beginning of this passage of Scripture, and it goes on to say that, therefore, uh, and fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, scorning and shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you do not grow weary and you do not lose heart. Before it even gets to that, before it gets to losing heart, growing weary, anything said about Jesus, it says, you got to lose the stuff that's weighing you down. It's time to pick up the pace. And, 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 and I would just encourage you to, to run with perseverance. The, the Bible says that. The Bible says that we are to run a race that's marked out. For, I have a race. You have a race. It's not the same. But it, it, Facebook is not your pace book. You, you run what God has called you to run. Run with perseverance. Uh, great lives and great marriages are built by people who don't feel like it. It doesn't say run when you feel like it. It says run with perseverance. It means do what you know that God has called you to do, even when you don't, even when you don't feel like it. The marriages and the people that we work with that have great marriages and other people look in kind of through the proverbial window of their lives and say, wow, they have it, they have it made. They're perfect partners. They just get each other. Everything. I, I guarantee they have done some hard work. It doesn't just auto magically happen. Okay. It doesn't happen. You have to do it when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. I was getting ready to run the other day, and I posted this on Facebook because I got all ready. I have my running shoes on. I got my beanie. I got my lights. Got got my bottle of water, and I'm standing inside the front door looking at the doorknob, just standing there looking at it. And I was like, I don't want to run today. I love to run, but why don't I want to run today? I don't feel. Everybody say feel. I don't feel like running today. But guess what I did? I opened the door. I went outside in the cold, dark morning, and I went for a run. I went anyway. In fact, a couple hours later, I reposted. I said, you know what? I was so mad at my feelings. I went back out and ran another couple miles because I just wanted the stupid feelings. I'm not going to let them hold me back. And I want to say to you, stop waiting for your feelings. Sometimes it's easier to feel your way into action than to act your way, or to act your way into feelings than it is to feel your way into action. Okay? So how's your pace? On your, on your spiritual smartwatch, as it relates to the relationships that you have, husband, wife, mom, dad, son, daughter, single, seniors, People here in church, are you running your pace? Again, not compared to anybody else, but are you running the speed that God has called you to run? Because I have my own pace. My pace is about for a half marathon, and we'll see how it is for a marathon here shortly. But it's about, it's about 8 minutes, 18 seconds. That's what it was last Sunday anyway. Okay? But that's slow. That's, that's slower than it's been at times. And what I've realized is over the years... I've been running a lot more, but I've been running a lot slower. And I know what I hear from time to time. I go to the doctor and I'll tell the doctor and I'll say, hey, what, you know, I'm not sure what's going on. And he'll say, well, Phil, you know, you're getting, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't say that O word. Do not even think about saying that, right? But it, it is true, but I should be running a little bit. And what I realize is in my, in, in my running, in my relationships, I should be running a little faster. When there are things that are happening, things that should change, I should be pursuing them a little quicker. So how's your pace? So that's what it is. If I, if I run, I'm going to run a marathon on February the 11th in St. Petersburg. And if I, if I run in that time, three hours and 50 minutes, I can qualify for the Boston Marathon. Will I ever run the Boston Marathon? I don't know. But I think I can do that. But I got to pick up my pace. How about you? I'm not talking about running outside. I'm talking about running your life. I'm talking about your relationships. How are you, how you doing on your pace? So this is a good friend of mine. His name is Bryce Kenny. 
And he actually is the driver for Monster Jam. He's going to be here the weekend that I run the marathon in February. And uh, just an amazing guy. He's the one with a mohawk. I'm the one with a no-hawk. All right. And uh, loves the Lord, loves his family. Uh, he's such a great, such a great guy. And he lives what I would call a sensational life, right? Driving a Monster Jam truck called the Mohawk Warrior. And I, I thought maybe it would be appropriate if we played a little Monster Jam truck this morning in church experience. So I want you to take a look at one of his, one of his stunts. Here we go. <laughs> it's actually called the Houston save. It was, he was laying on the side thinking, Oh no, this isn't going to be good. It's not going to be good. In fact, when that happens, they have to send out the crane of shame. And he said, I was laying there thinking, I don't want to listen to that out. He said, I just, so I just mashed the accelerator and voila, pop back up. But I, I tell him, I said, that, that is, that is so cool. He said, you know, a lot of times that doesn't happen. I, I can't get back on the track. In fact, I've damaged the truck so bad that they do have to come out and they have to get me. And then we have to repair it as quickly as we can to get back in the race. And he wrote a book called Geared for Life, and in it he talks about this, and it's a term called thrashing. I never heard it before. He said this is actually what happens when something, when, when you're in the race, something bad happens, and it's this chaotic crazy time of repairing and getting back as quick as you can so that you can win the race and i thought man that's that 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 will preach that's that's what happens to a lot of us we we're in the race something happens to us we, we either get mad at god or we get mad at somebody or something slows us down stalls us out stops us and then we just sit there wasting time getting bitter resentful hurtful when in fact we ought to get out some wrenches, we ought to get out some work, we ought to get into doing the things that will help us to get back in the race. So how about you? How about you? Are you do you need some thrashing? <laughs> some thrashing in your relationship. It might be go time. And then finally, the last thing I want to share with you is we look at these these 24 hours that we get. What time is it for you? It, it could be it could be it's design time. You know, or in other words, time to get organized. This is the time of the year where treadmills and trainers and totes <laughs> are, are a big part of our lives, right? But besides spring training, this is probably the next time where we spend the most time getting things organized. We're putting away decorations, we're putting away Christmas, we're putting away all that stuff, and we decide, hey, we need to get some totes, let's get a little better organized. And, and this is the time, 2024, as we start in resolutions, all that stuff, this is the time where some of us need to, to work a little harder at, at what we need to do, and not maybe... Maybe not so much work, but maybe plan better. Ephesians says, be very careful then how you live, okay? Very careful how you spend these dollars. And not as unwise, but as wise, making the most investing, making the most of every opportunity. We want to change our lives without changing the way we live, and we can't do that. Yeah. There are a lot of times, I wish this was different. I wish this was, I want something different. Yeah, wishing and wanting is not going to do it. Working is what will bring change. Even the great theologian Stephen Tyler from Aerosmith. <laughs> you can dream on, dream on, dream on, dream until your dreams come true. They won't work. You've got to do the work, right? you got to do the work. I, I found this yesterday. I thought this was a powerful quote. The treasure that we seek is hidden in the work we need to do. The treasure we seek, the things that we want, the better relationship, the better home, the better business. It, it is, it's hidden. The treasure is hidden in the work that we need to do to get it. Most of us are bad people. The people that sit across the table from me on a weekly basis and they talk about their lives, they're, they're not bad people. Most of them are bad planners. They, they want something different, but they don't know how to, well, I'll take that back. They want something different. They know what to do to make it different, but they don't implement a framework of organization to make it, to make it happen. I hear this all the time from husbands, from wives, from moms, from dads. We will say, hey, you said that you would do this, but you didn't do that. And somewhere in between that conversation was, well, I forgot. And it sounds like I don't care when in fact is I didn't plan. That's what that means. And so we help people just to put together a framework that will help them to stick with what they said, to be able to follow through on what they plan and really get some better results. New goals don't deliver new results. New lifestyles do. 
the lifestyle of the process, it's not an outcome. For this reason, all of your energy should go into building better habits, not chasing better results. Again, James Clear. If you haven't found this book, this is a great tool for putting in a framework that will help you be successful in every area of your life, in your relationships, at home, or at work, or at, at church, and creating an identity. What, what do you want to be a, a, as a husband, being the best husband, as a wife, being the best wife, as a, as a manager, what, whatever the case, as a Christian, it, it, deciding on an identity and then linking all of your habits to that will help you to become that. It's as simple as that. I, I love this. A year from now, what will you wish you had done today? The $24, 24 hours that you have today. What can you do different? For some of you, it's design time. So what time is it? When you look at your spiritual watch, what, 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 what time does it say? What time does it say? Re what do you really need to do right now? Because in football <laughs> and faith, the clock determines the play, right? The clock determines the play. So, so what does the clock say for you? It, is it time to follow God with all of your heart? All of your heart is it time to pick up the pace in your relationships you're you're moving you're going in the right direction you're just going too slow and you need to pick it up or is it to simply make a plan you you know what you want and you know what to do you just don't know how to do it so with that being said a shameless plug for what we do we work with people again in all sorts of different situations and help them to put together a plan that will lead them to success so if you're here today, you have a marriage that's in trouble, your mom or dad needs some help parenting, your individual, maybe some, some things that are going on with you personally. We have a team of six people, uh, therapists and coaches, psychologists. They would be more than happy to work with. We partner with Central Campus. We partner with several of the other CEs around the country. And we're here for you. It's been my privilege today to share with you. I hope you've been encouraged. And I hope that you'll spend, actually, I hope you'll invest today as best you can. Can I pray for you? Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. And we thank you for the time that you've given us. We don't even know how much that is. But we pray that each and every day that we would invest properly in our lives, in our love, and in our commitment to you, that we would serve you, we would follow you, we would become and be the people that you want us to be. And I pray for those that are here today that have chosen this God time. I, I pray that you would encourage them. I pray that they would lean into you and follow you with all their hearts. I pray for those that, that it's go time and in relationships that, that are falling apart simply because they're lagging behind, simply because they're not showing interest, simply because they don't look like they care. And I pray, Lord, too, for those that, that really do care, that really want something different, they just haven't been able to figure out. I pray that you give them wisdom as to how to design a plan that will really help them to be the people that they need to be in the relationships that you give them. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Before our usher team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here's a few important things happening with our CE family. Whether you're new to CE or have been attending for a while, you're invited to join us for First Class. You'll learn more about our history, beliefs, mission, and vision of CE. This is also a great opportunity to meet some other great CE people. To let us know if you're interested in attending First Class January 28th, write First Class on your response card. Represent your church by sporting some CE merch. Check out the fresh new styles available. This is a great way to get the conversation started with people you encounter as you are out and about. It may even lead to an invitation to learn more about Jesus. Check out our new styles at www.churchexperience.tv slash merch. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and to receive our tithes and offerings, giving is a response to the overflow of gratitude that fills our heart. Gratitude for all that he has done and has yet to do and through our lives in the church family. When we respond with a grateful heart, we are walking in radical generosity that will overflow into many areas of our lives. No matter how you choose to give, whether in person, online, or through the CE app, you are laying the pathway for others to encounter and know Jesus. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ. Lost 
I loved today's impacting service. You may have personally made a commitment today during the service, and if so, please reach out. Also, if you have any other questions, comments, or prayer requests, go to churchexperience.tv forward slash connect, or scan the QR code on the screen. I personally love to stay connected by staying up to date on the CE social media, Instagram, Facebook, website, or app. It's been great to share another special service with our CE family today. I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Have a good one.